casting, uh, 95% of the casting happened online. Um, it was very hard for me geographically to, you know, move around and meet people and network with people. So I just used the internet very effectively, you know, um, in, in terms of contacting agencies, networking on the phone with agents. And um, the most uh, the most effective, uh, I don't want to say the most effective, but the most responsive agency was the Craze Agency. The majority of the of the headshots I was getting back were from the Craze Agency. The most, you know, interesting, you know, looking characters or the most, I want to say, potential candidates for the film were coming from the Craze Agency. So I called Michael Risk, who happens to be the uh, booking agent and the, one of the uh, casting agents. Uh, at the Craze Agency, and uh, he said, yeah, you know, I'll help you cast this, and and uh, he said, it was so funny on the phone, he said, um, Man, I, I would be interested in being a part of this project myself, and I said, okay. Well, he sent me the headshot, and uh, and I was like, this is him, this is the bad guy. I'm like, wow. You know, a lot of directors are different. They gotta go through many casting sessions. They gotta go through many you know, uh, read-throughs and callbacks and callbacks. Well, when you're working with no money, you don't have a lot of, like, free gas money. You don't have a lot of free studio space to go and do these casting calls. So you got to really kind of work within your your means. And, I mean, with the Internet, anything is possible. So I did most of my casting online. You know, I casted Michael Risk was the first one who plays Vincent that I cast for the role. A day or two later, he sent over a headshot for Patty, or Patricia Mayer, and um, I said to myself, wow, this is her. I don't need to look any further. It was amazing. Um, the headshots that came in, I basically looked at the headshot and said, this is the person I want. You know, And, and maybe, maybe that's not the right way to do it, but I think that in terms of an audience member, in terms of what I want to see in a movie, casting the look, that's really important to me. you got to cast... The characters, you know, and a lot of people will cast differently to suit the talent needs. And, you know, I just I think it's wrong. I think you really need to cast and stay true to yourself. You know, on on casting. So, working with Patty was very nice. I really enjoyed working with Patty. She is so nice and she's so calm and she's so relaxed and she was kind of like everybody's big sister on the set. I mean, you know, amid all the problems, the lighting problems, you know, the cast and crew, you know, uh, I would always look to Patty and she would just look at me and just be to totally calm. And so she kind of brought the balance to the force, or I'm sorry, the balance to the, the set, you know. And, uh, but uh, Patty's character, you know, Lithia, was a very hard, hard character for her to play. We, we went through several script sessions where we were trying to solidify her feelings because, you know, women are so full of so many emotions, but you can't film that. You can't film emotions of all sorts. You, you have to kind of harness, harness it down to two or three emotions. So once we kind of figured out Lithia's emotion and the roller coaster she was experiencing, I mean, here she's lost her you know her love of her life and there's this guy on the on the balcony shooting at them and I mean it was just like I can't imagine what kind of a character I can't imagine what would be going through her mind and it was it was it was hard for her I think in some some cases to perform that to act that out and so I told her on the set you know just make this as real as possible this is this is like a documentary uh, you're not acting this is a this is a real emotion, and, and she admitted it perfectly. And I think that I think her performance was dynamite, and, and everything came out well. Working with Michael was an interesting experience. Michael has a lot of uh, talent. He's very he's very meticulous, and he critiques himself quite a bit, which which is good. And uh, to an extent, you have to let your actors breathe. And so I felt like Michael needed some breathing room so immediately when working with Michael I said you know Michael you you're really into this character I mean you really like this character so I'm gonna let you and Vincent go talk to each other and figure each other out and uh, Vincent was Michael and Michael was Vincent like in, in the next week and it wasn't even an issue you know like directing uh, 
Michael was 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 really fun because he was always changing the lines, changing the performance, um, and it was almost a situation where I had to kind of contain him and contain his character because he was actually letting his character come out of the cage too much. So I had to kind of harness his energy, harness his you know, his professionalism and his talent. So that's Mike for you. Chris Johnston. Working with Chris was a really good experience. When I received a headshot from the Craze Agency, um, I originally, to be honest, I, I, I kind of put it in my save for later folder. I was still not quite certain that he was Lancaster. Um, I liked his headshot uh, and I liked the look that he had, but I wasn't really sold quite that easily. You know, I really thought that whoever's going to play Lancaster's really got to have, uh, you know, a chivalry, uh, kind of a presence that when he walks in the room, you're like, whoa, you know, he's a somebody, you know. And so, um, and we were actually already starting into production. And I was still trying to find my Lancaster. Like, it was a nightmare. Like, we already had the crew. We had the locations. We actually started scheduling when we were going to shoot this thing. And I was still, like, looking for this, this actor, this Lancaster. Well, I, I think I talked to probably 40 guys on the phone. And, and, you know, emailed people back and forth. And weeks went by. Weeks went by. And I'd already rehearsed. It, almost a month into rehearsals and still had not casted this guy. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, it's so funny. I've got Vincent. I've got Lithia. We've already been rehearsing for a month. The only thing holding us up is I do not have, uh, you know, this, this Lancaster character. So w at one of our film meetings, I went through the headshots and selected two or three that I thought were the most, you know, worthy, I guess you could say. And uh, out of the three, the only guy that showed up was Chris. And uh, I thought, you know, these other two guys have been begging me for, for a whole month for the role, these two guys. And, you know, Chris didn't, didn't really communicate with me at all. He, he emailed me a few times as a follow-up kind of a favor, but wasn't really pushing any issues or pushing his agenda. But, man, I got emails from these two other guys like you wouldn't believe and it was getting way out of hand and I said to these guys look show up at this meeting we're having and I'll I'll, I'll talk to you I'll interview you and, and I mean we'll see what happens so what happened was they didn't show up but Chris showed up Chris showed up and we met up at the Salt Lake City Library he walked to the door and I was like I don't know who that guy is but that guy's perfect for Lancaster I hope he oh, oh my gosh and I'm like Wait, he's walking, he's walking towards me. Whoa, he's looking at me. I'm like, oh, this is cool. And I'm like, are you Chris? He's like, yeah. I'm, I'm like, you got it. You got the role. And he was just like, what? And I'm like, go over and talk to Sean. He's the makeup, uh, the makeup guy. Go meet your two co-stars and uh, get, your, get your fangs. You know, you're going to have to get fangs and contact lenses. So... You need to get over and to start talking to Sean about the uh, the makeup situation. And Chris looked at me like, blink, blink, um, okay. Uh, and he kind of like slowly handed me his headshot. And I was like, thanks, set it aside. And I, I was talking to my crewman and the camera guys. And, and uh, that, that was the end of it. I mean, he walked through that door. I looked at him and the deal was done.